Well, we are all. live on Facebook and we are super, super excited, especially me, to be able to have the honor to interview Jackie Kravitz today, who has been in the business for 24 years ago, you started? Yes. Uh -huh. And you started as, correct me if I'm wrong, you started as a, phys, a, a prospecting because you were actually selling on your own and yep. then you realized why am I trying to sell on my own? I'm going to hire an agent. I'll just go get my license and sell it myself to save the commission, right? That's right. Money was tied back then. So saving the, the listing side was better than not being able to save anything. That's why I ended up get, getting a real estate license. Yes. I love that. So, and then you basically, um, the, I know the first year was about 25 homes you sold. Yes. And then by the fourth year, you were selling, you were hitting the, over, the three digits over a hundred homes and majority was just all for sale by owners and expires, right? Yeah. I would say all of it really. I, I, sometimes I see, well, maybe I had one past client that called me cause I didn't used to call them. So they were all physicals and expired yet. Oh, I love that. And for those that are just jumping on, uh, we're super excited to have you. And uh, make sure you use the chat box um, on Facebook or in the chat box for Zoom so that we can answer all your questions. And I have to tell you such a fun story because my mom told me about this. So my mom has been in the business uh, 30, it's going on 34 years. And she remembers in the early 90s when you guys, uh, there was a conference in Orlando and she said, everybody was broke as as crap like they were mm -hmm. all broke agents they all chipped in to go uh carpool to orlando and stay in this hotel together and she said you know uh you were taking care of your little ones and you know you had your hands full and she said uh then a few months later she you bought a house she ran into you and you bought a house and a new mercedes and she said wow the fizzbos work <laughs> Yes. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. Yeah. You, you told me you were going to tell a story. I'm like, I have no idea what she's going to talk about. Cause of course your mom and I worked in the same office. So yeah, real estate has been very good to me to say the least. Yeah. I love that. She was like, wow, they really work. Cause she was selling new construction. So the yeah. fist smells really, really work. So I'm excited to learn. Cause if anybody missed the part one version of the conversation with Jackie, you got to go back and listen because it was really, really good. So we're going to jump into the goods and let's just kind of recap about the mindset of a FISBO because you had said that it's, they're easier to approach than an expired. Oh yeah. Right. For sure. Yes. And, well, what, and what would you and say? You, expired. you know, the, the, the tough ones to speak with are the brand new expireds. after a day, two or three days is a little bit better. The older they are, the easier the expireds are to speak with, but also a lot of them after two or three days already relisted the property. So, but FISBOs, and I think this is one of the reasons why even my first year in real estate, I didn't list and sell a lot of them because I had no idea what I was doing, but I, I did call FISBOs every day and I love them just because Compared to expireds, they were really easy to talk to. You know, they don't scream and, and hang up on me. I'm like, okay, you know, they invite you over. They offer to pay a commission. I'm like, okay, these people are cool. And plus, since I was making so many prospecting calls, I was calling around the neighborhood where I live. I was making, they call it circle prospecting or just listed. When I started, I was calling around other agents' listings because I had none. And I'm looking for somebody who wants to sell. And then the Fizzbowls all want to sell. I'm like, okay, well, these people are, why am I going to call hundreds, which I still did because there were not enough Fizzbowls and I didn't know what I was doing. I would have to call hundreds of people around my neighborhood to find one that wants to sell. Whereas every Fizzbowl wants to sell. Yes, I'm going out, you know, I'm going to go call them. So, yeah, I love, I love that. Uh, so basically, they've already waved their right hand, and yeah. FISBO also stands for fastest source of business opportunity. They wave their hand. They want you. They already said that they want to sell, and I yeah. agree that they're definitely nicer than expired. Um, although my business has been mostly all generated on referrals, uh, I have to say that uh, thank you, Bold, for making me call and learn the FISBO and expired scripts, because <laughs> that was probably the only time I did, because I was forced to. <laughs> um, yeah. 
<laughs> but the mindset's definitely different. They're definitely a lot nicer. Would you say that FISBOs take longer to cultivate um, and still form a relationship than expires besides their mindset being different? Yes and no. So I'll explain. I believe, or I believe, no, I know. For sale by owners are selling on their own to save the commission. They, and, and if you ask them that question, is, which is a question that I've always used, that I, it's been on the script that I've used from the beginning, probably from the third year when I started to realize, okay, what is this about? How do I, how do I improve my results with FISBOs? If you ask them, is saving the commission the main reason why you decided to sell it yourself instead of using an agent? 99% of them are gonna say yes. Once in a while, they may say, well, I had a bad experience with an agent or I sold on my own before. They could say something like that. And that may be a part of the reason, but it's not the main reason. Because even if they sold on their own before, if they, if they thought that they lost money selling on their own and they would have made more money with an agent, they wouldn't be doing it again. Even if, if they had a bad experience with an agent and they thought that selling on their own could cost them tens of thousands of dollars, they wouldn't be doing it on. So the commission is always the, the main reason, no matter what they say. Sometimes they may say, again, 99% of them say, well, yeah, of course, you guys charge a lot of money. I, you know, I, I can do it myself and I don't want to. Yes, absolutely. So when, when you say it takes time to cultivate, for me, my first two years, that's exactly how it was. And, and we talked about this on the first webinar with Tristan that I didn't, I didn't understand the value of what I did. I mean, I'm just like talking to people, just learning as I go. So yeah, it took a lot of cultivating in those first couple of years. And then I started to learn about and starting to believe the value of what I did and how I can help them and how I can benefit them financially. And when, you, when I started to really get that and, and own it and believe it and have those types of, not conversations over the phone, but asking questions like, so when they say, yeah, I, I'm selling on my own to save money, absolutely. And you know what, Tara, you're right. I mean, the commission is a lot of money. And if you can sell it for the same price I sell for, why in the world would you pay me to do it? That, that would make no sense. I, and if I was in your situation, I'd be thinking the same way. And it's funny because since I was a Facebook before I got into real estate, I was thinking the same way, right? <laughs> and so, that's why I got your license. Right. I don't, I don't really say that to them, although I probably could. So they, I, I really can relate, you know, because based on what they know makes sense. And I, I get it that it makes sense. And then after that repeating and approving, so they really feel like, wow, okay, she agrees with me. She, this makes sense. I would say, Tara, let me ask you, if there was a way where I could sell this property for you and you would actually end up with more money even after you pay my commission than if you were to sell it yourself. Now, I know that for you right now, the math that makes no sense. You're thinking, how is that possible? How do I yeah, pay it doesn't you? Make any and then, sense, like I say all of that to them, right? I mean, I know it doesn't make sense. And at the same time, hypothetically speaking, if it was possible, I would imagine that you would, you might be open to that possibility, right? Like Absolutely. if you know to that, it would be like, yeah, no, I, I have no common sense, you know? So they're like, well, uh, you know, and you're under no obligation. I make it very easy for them to say yes. And then they'll say, well, you know, I, I don't think that's possible. What do you mean? How could you do that? It opens up a conversation. I love that. And I'm going to save because I know you, you, I've, I've heard you role play before and you are an absolute beast. So I'm super excited to uh, role play with you towards the end of this. Yeah. And again, for those jumping on any questions, yeah. put them in the chat box and we'll try to answer them. Um, so we talked about the mindset of a FISBO and how they're easier to approach than expired. 
Uh, when it comes to looking for those FISBOs, uh, I know when you were talking that one of the places that you were getting, uh, what was it, Sweat Hogs? Was it? Was, uh, where was the place you were getting phone numbers and scripts from? I mean, you know what? Back then, I mean, we're talking 24 years ago, companies like Espresso Agent didn't exist. So this is so weird. I don't even know if they still have it. I remember, first of all, I used to drive around with a little notepad and, you know, there was a ton of FISBOs in the late 90s. There were a lot of them because it was a buyer's market in Broward County. And so there, there were, people, homes weren't selling. So the FISBOs would sit there for a while. So I'd, I'd drive and I'd write the address and the phone number. And then I would also, I remember at the grocery store, like when you walked in, there was a little stand. It's, it was called the flyer. I don't even know if they still have that. And I don't know. it was like a little magazine, right? That was free. And there was a section there on FISBOs. And then there were some websites. I mean, the internet was kind of like just kind of in the first few years of the internet. And then they had websites like, I don't know, com. I don't remember. I used to spend actually every couple of weeks, I think every two weeks or so, I would go on online on websites and search for FISBOs and put it in my little thing. I mean, I did everything manually. I didn't, I never had an auto dialer. Like I dialed every number with my finger back then. So yeah, I, you know, I, I drove around and I got them and I would get the expireds out of the MLS and that's it. Well, the, the word that my mom used for you of why you had your success so soon from FizzBoats is she said, boy, was she tenacious. She never gave up. Yeah. She was very tenacious, never gave up with calling them, no matter how many times. And that's why when everybody was broke and then you bought a house and driving around in Mercedes because you're doing pretty good. <laughs> uh, those, were, those were good. I mean, look, I... This really doesn't matter for the agents listening, but maybe it does. Maybe it will inspire someone. Before I got into real estate, first of all, I was selling my house on my own and I was a stay-at-home mom because I, my daughter was like uh, maybe six months when I got into real estate. My son was eight. And I, prior to my daughter being born, I was working in a hotel and I had worked in several hotels, a front desk clerk, checking people in and out. I had a job as an assistant manager, administrative assistant, different things. And I was making $30,000 a year. I don't have a college degree. So had I not gotten into real estate, what would have my future been as far as, you know, career and money? I don't know. Probably, so you know, now. I would have gotten up to maybe making fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, and 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 that's it. You know, you hit a ceiling, and all of a sudden, I got into real estate in my first year. Those twenty-five homes. I mean, I, I were like when when you say tenacious, I was just determined. You know, it's like nothing will stop me. What did I have fear at times? Yeah, yeah. Especially like I would see a, an expired that was over even over 300,000, I'd be scared because I lived in a $100,000 house and I'm thinking, these people, oh my gosh, 300,000 is so expensive. They, you know, I gotta do, I gotta be somebody else. I gotta say something different. The script is not gonna work. Same with Fizzbills and expires. And I had fear. I would see an expire that was a million. I would dial and actually while the phone's ringing, I'd be praying that they wouldn't answer. I'm like, oh my God, what am I, like panic. You know, we all go through that. And over time, you know, I didn't let that stop me. It, like an expired would scream, hang up. Why are you calling me? And I go, okay, well, the, you know, next. You keep going and going. Because I realized now, back then, I was just determined to change my, my life, really. You know, I didn't want to be, I mean, because technically I was broke, you know. <laughs> And I didn't have a lot to look forward to. That first year, those 25 homes, I made 65,000, close to 70,000. Remember, I was making 30. No, I, I thought, still, still wow. really good 24 years ago, you know? Yeah, I mean, the average price wasn't very high. My average price actually was never very high. Even when I was selling 120, 30 homes a year, average price was like 170 because I was calling Fizzbos and Expireds 
in the entire, you know, Broward, because you live right here, in the entire county. If I saw an expired or fizzbo in Boca, occasionally I'd go, you know, it's like, so I wasn't, I, I wouldn't call anybody like under 80, 90,000, but outside of that, you know, it's just, let's go. What so, do you think got you over? So besides the, term, the, the determination and you have little ones and you could have just gone back to the hotels, like what do you think like kept you from going and keeping, picking up that phone for every time you got yelled at and just kept going? Like what would you say there's just determination or you just said, I'm going to figure this out. Like I'm going to do this. It took you three months to get your first deal. It was a, yeah, I don't, maybe two or three months before I got my first listing and then selling it is something else, right? Because in the beginning, I, I wanted to focus on listings, not buyers, just because I had the two kids. I was prospecting nights and weekends because during the day, I had to cook, clean, take care of the house, take my son to school, my daughter's a baby, you know, it's like, so when my ex-husband would get home, I would get on the phone around 5.30 or so in the afternoon till 8.30, 9 p.m., Monday through Friday. And then Saturdays and Sundays when he was home to take care of the kids, well, then I could prospect all day. And that's what so, I did. I, I mean, what kept me going, it was, first of all, I saw an incredible opportunity because I'm thinking, wow, you know, I was working 48, 40, 50 hours a week in a hotel with not, a, not much to look forward to in my future, making $30,000 a year. And now I sell one house and I make $5,000. Oh yeah, I'm, I'll figure this out. You know what I mean? And then that first, I just, you know, I had moments of doubting it. You know, can I do it? You know, like everybody else, because I've been coaching for 15 years. So I know the same things that agents think, oh, the, is it really going to work for me? Work for, oh, can I really do it? I'm not, you know, smart enough. I mean, I'm, I was born and raised in Brazil. I moved to this country when I was 22 years old. English is my second language. I have less of an accent now because I've been here for 35 years. But the truth is, you know, you doubt yourself. I don't have an education. I this and that and what, you know, and I just, what kept me going is I was, first of all, I had moments of doubt, but in the end, I knew, I believed there was an incredible opportunity and I wanted to change my life. I didn't want to be broke anymore. So I will do whatever it takes. And for me, since I don't have a, you know, I have a, an associate in arts degree, it's not like I was going to go to school and be a, I don't know, a brain Doctor. surgeon or, a, <laughs> you know, rocket scientist that can make so much money. So for me, it was just an amazing opportunity. And I love really that. What really helped me, Tara, with the fear, the doubt, whatever. I remember from the very beginning, I became obsessed with listening to, I used to listen to Brian Tracy. I had cassettes of a program called The Psychology of Achievement. I broke some of those cassettes. It was like, over and over and over you know it's positive stuff it's like mindset it's you can do it whatever I, it was 24 7 listening to that kind of stuff my car i didn't even know if the radio worked back then it's like every time i got in my car i'm listening to an audio program i was reading books you know recommend think and grow rich all kinds of mindset books which up until i got into real estate i didn't i had never heard of the word mindset i'm like okay what is that I remember um, Earl Nightingale, The Strangest Secret, you become what you think about most of the time. I'm like, what do you mean? That's really, I, I thought that's really stupid. What is, what is it that, what I think, what does that have to do with my circumstances, my life situation, where I came from? It has nothing. And then slowly I'm like, whoa, yeah. But it, it's, I say to my clients now, you gotta bombard your brain with powerful, positive motivation, inspirational ideas, 24 seven, because we all need that, even today. So, Amen. You know, so when you were listening to Brian Tracy, you're reading Think and Grow Rich, I gotta ask you, you've been coaching now for 15 years, what are you telling your clients now besides, 
I mean, you said when you were talking, the first two things that came to my mind were the two bold laws. What you focus on expands and you can have reasons or results and you can't have both. And you didn't make up any excuses. So you had your little ones and you started calling at 530. So there was no excuse to not be able to, oh, you can't do the normal lead gen from nine to 11. You had zero excuses. You just, you found there's a will, there's a way and you made it happen. What are you telling your clients, your coaching clients to now to listen to, to make sure that they're filling? Are you still reading, telling them to listen to Brian Tracy and read Think and Grow Rich? A hundred percent. Why not? It's like timeless stuff. I mean, there's so many mindset books that I love. Actually, one of my favorites, this book is over a hundred years old. It's The Science of Getting Rich. Have you read that book, Tara? No. Wait, well, well, I'm right the yeah. of Getting Rich. The Science of Getting Rich. It's an awesome book. Interestingly enough, it's not about getting rich, even though that's the title of the book. It's a mindset book. Really, it is. And actually, that's the book that inspired The Secret. You know, most people have yeah. heard of the book or the movie, whatever. So there, there's so many of them. But yeah, I say of course, you got to bombard your brain. Whatever you're listening to is listen to Tony Robbins and Brian Tracy and Zig Ziglar, Oro Nightingale, all this kind of stuff, you know, books everywhere. Because all of us, especially now, right, we're living through some interesting times to say the fascinating least. Fascinating right? times. <laughs> yes. Interesting. Fascinating. Fascinating. And see, I, there's just so much negative stuff being thrown at us all day long. If we allow it to be thrown at us, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a choice. So it's a choice I, I if we feel, choose. Yeah, I feel like protecting my mental space is the single most important thing I have to do. And the more I bombard my brain with powerful, positive, the more I read, the more I listen to. I didn't used to read a whole lot. I used to listen to a lot of audio programs on cassettes. Now I have Audible. But I still, every morning, I had a pre, I call it my pre-prospecting routine. And that what's routine, that look like? That was like sit down for 45 minutes. At first, I would get out of and I was living in the house in Coral Springs already there. I was talking about, you know, beautiful home. I mean, here I come out of a hundred thousand dollar house four years later. I'm, you know, I'm living in this beautiful neighborhood in this gorgeous house. I had a treadmill in a little room downstairs. I used to get do some exercise, get up at five in the morning, go on the treadmill, take a shower, sit down for 45 minutes. And I would look at my goals, you know, I, got, I had some papers with goals and pictures of things that I wanted to do, things I wanted to have. And then I would read a few pages of any positive, motivational, inspirational book, like 15 minutes. I read a little bit of that. And then I, I had some daily reminders, you know, stuff like the bold laws, you know, quotes. I'm a motivational quote junkie. And I would read all like these things that I felt I got to remind myself of this every day because if I don't I you know my mind just goes goes down and I think that made a huge difference for I think no I know I know it made a huge difference because the more positive powerful inspirational stuff that I put in my mind it's almost like there is no space for negativity so out negative thinking so yeah I mean that that I was love that that was, that, was, that was a huge gem. I don't know if you guys really grasped what she just said. Besides the fact that you, your comments, and I agree with them, that this is why I was so excited to interview you, because you are vulnerable, and vulnerability is sexy, by the way, and you're transparent. And I just love that, because I'm a very much an open book, and so I love learning from you. I, this is not my first time learning from you, but you just hit on gold. You just said that you have a, I've never heard of that, a pre- prospecting routine yeah. so that was looking at your goals so whether that's your goals written down which your goals should always be written down and or your vision board and then reading, that. Yeah. reading 15 minutes or would you say 15 pages whichever one and you had your daily reminders which are kind of like your law or we call bold laws if you're with keller williams um however it could be your laws or affirmations really yes. they're home they're well, happy affirmations they're all day long 
every time I used to think, you know, I am um, four years into it already, five, six years, you know, I'm selling 130 homes a year, but it's like, oh my God, Jackie, this and that, you know, so I remember every single day, this is like now in the early 2000s, when the market was, I mean, it was an insane, like revolving door, right? Everything was selling. There were fewer expireds now because things were selling so fast. There were a lot of FISBOs, but a lot of them were actually selling. And I, I always believed that even if they put it on the market and in 24 hours they get a full price offer, how much more money could they have sold this property for had it been exposed to thousands of agents and buyers versus just a very limited number of people they have access to, no matter what they do. So even when, when these FISBOs in the early 2000s were selling on their own, I felt like they were losing money, even if they got full price, because I believed in what I did. But I had, you know, I had a lot of days when I remember after my third, fourth year, my goal was set one qualified listing appointment a day. That's why I get on the phone every day. I don't get on the phone to make 20, 30 contacts or prospects for two or three hours. That's secondary. My goal is one qualified listing appointment every day. And I had so many days of, you know, talking to 20 people and not setting any appointments. Facebook's and expires, no appointments. They're sold, they're this, they're that. And I would doubt myself every day. I would, I'd be thinking like, the mind is so insane, right? I, I know in bold, they call it the monkey mind. Mine, I call it my roommate. I have a crazy roommate. Yeah. So do I. <laughs> yeah, like insane. I, it's a book that I love too that says what? if I had an actual roommate, if I lived with somebody that was talking to me the way my mind talks to me all day long, I wouldn't even live with this person for one day. I got this thing in my head. I'm driving me insane. Untethered so, Soul talks about that. Yeah. yeah, I love that book. So you read it too. Anyway, I, um, so I used to have these doubts after making 20 calls and no appointments. You know what I used to think, Tara? What? I'll never be able to set another listing appointment. That's what my roommate would say. That's it, Jackie. Back to the hotel front desk, girl. This is it. No more. Real estate's done. This is a crazy market. Everything is selling so fast. It's over. I used to think that on a daily basis, if not hourly basis. So guess what? You mentioned affirmations and positive stuff. I, every time I had that thought, I had different things that I did to snap out of it, right? Let's hear them. That I did, but affirmations, you know? As soon as I had that thought, I would like, no, I am, I am a great sales, but I'm the best at whatever my affirmations were. And what I did also is uh, I'm addicted to sticky notes. I still I have one right here. Um, so what I, what I did at some point is I would I'd take a sticky note and on it, I would write the names of the last three listings, fizzbos and expires that I listed. And Ooh. I would keep it in front of me. So when I start thinking, oh, that's it, you know, I, I'll never be able to set another appointment, I'll never take another listing, I would look there and, and, and recall, oh, wait, Tara Carter, oh, yeah, you know, and I would think about, like, that was just a week ago or whatever, a few days ago, I called her out of nowhere, just, I set an appointment that afternoon, I was there, I listed the property, and so I would have three or four successes that I could recall that would snap me out of motivated. My, my mind funk, you know, because we all have that. I don't know. Yes, one of, do. A great book that I've read recently, and I'm a little hesitant to recommend because there's a lot of language in this book. So if you get offended by, you know, don't read it. But I'll say it anyhow, because it's one of the most powerful mindset books I've read. It's David Goggins, Can't Hurt Me. You've heard of oh, this book? Oh, yeah, that's a really good one. Did you read it? 
Yes, I did. Yeah. Kicked me in my butt. <laughs> yeah. I, I know, right? Like, you, like you read that book and you're like, oh my God, what, what exactly am I complaining about? What is it that I am afraid of? Anyway, in the book, he talks about the cookie jar. I don't know if you oh, remember that. Yep. And so my, I used to do this thing with writing the names of the, the people that I, the, the latest or a few listings that I took that were easy. You know, they were physicals and expireds. I call, first call, set an appointment, get out their list. It's like the cookie jar, you know, it's recalling your successes so you could snap out of the mental funk that we all have. So they're like strategies, but affirmations are critical. I, on my phone right now, I have an alarm, except for the days when I'm on calls like this, because I don't want my alarm going off. Every hour on the hour from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And when it goes off, my affirmation, it's one affirmation the most important one to me and it's right there every hour on the hour i because the alarm reminds me and the more i'm reminded the more i, I mean i gotta i gotta put good stuff in my mind all day long and i agree the people the people who say well affirmations don't work well they don't work because some people you know i don't know if i'm talking to anybody who's listening here they don't work because Maybe you spend five minutes in your day doing positive affirmations and the other 15, 16 hours that you're awake, you're saying negative stuff to yourself. So you're, you're, whatever you're, is gonna show up is what's most, what you're doing the most of. Tony Robbins has a, a quote I love that says, uh, it's not what you do once in a while that shapes your life, it's what you do consistently amen so if your positive affirmations are not working it's because you're doing more negative affirmations than positive affirmations turn this thing around and then you will see the results i love that and you know what i have to go back to the other day i didn't have to, i always rate my day at the end of the day and i yeah. rated my day and it was like a four and a half and i was like okay so what would have made it a 10 and i said i didn't say my affirmations about I've been homesick now for 15 days. So I didn't say my affirmation and I had this affirmation in my shower growing up as a kid. And I have to say the last two days, I've had the best days because I, as soon as I get up, I say it, which is I'm alive, I'm awake and I feel great. I feel good. I feel fine. I feel this way all the time. Oh, <laughs> and I, 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 and I just, that was really helpful for me. And thank goodness my parents put that in the shower because I, I can't forget it. It's like a little jingle that I have. And I really believe that that has made me feel so great. Even though like, if I feel something, I don't feel so great. Cause I feel like the affirmations and how we talk to ourselves is so powerful. And I'm so grateful for coaches like yourself that just pour into us and continue to remind us. And I want to spend the next um, 20 minutes talking about scripts, but all, and we're going to, I would love to role play, but first I want to answer some of these questions that we have. Uh, and most of them would be as well that why do FISBOs need an agent and how do we really benefit them financially? So let me give you the short version because I, you know, I, I tend to just get excited and I start talking about something else. I want to answer this question. FISBOs have problems, but they don't know they have them, right? So <laughs> like most people, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to give you a quick list of the problems and these are not all of them. These are just some of the ones that are part of this listing presentation to a FISBO. First problem is a lack of exposure. Don't go to a FISBO and say that like that. You know, there are scripts and dialogues to help them. Lack of exposure. Second problem is they are dealing with unqualified buyers. And that's not just a FISBO problem. That's a problem all real estate agents have, separating the ready, willing, and able from everybody else. Third problem, they're looking for a deal. They know that the homeowner is not paying a commission and the commission the seller is not paying, they feel like that's money they can save. So they're looking for a bargain. I call them bargain hunters. Problem number four, no negotiating skills. 
Number five, legal liability. And the last one, and it's, this is not the full list, but this is security as in safety. So when you look at these lists of problems, no matter, let's talk about lack of exposure for a moment. No matter what they do, they could put it on hundreds of websites, on Zillow, on who knows whatever. They can do open houses, put a sign there. They could even put it in the MLS with a limited representation, flat fee, put it in the MLS. I don't care what they do. They are not able to attract 100% of the buyers. And one of the reasons for that, according to NAR, the Profile of Buyers and Sellers, which is a report NAR publishes every year, sometimes two years. In 2019, 93% of all the homes sold in the United States, those homes were sold by a real estate agent, which means that a for sale by owner only attracts 7% of the market, period. Now- Huge. Right. That's so a huge number. They're doing all of this stuff to, because they know it's important. The more websites, the more open houses, I do this, I do that. It's to, to create more demand, to attract more buyers. But the bottom line is only 7% of buyers are buying directly from a homeowner. Why? because buyers don't pay a commission to a real estate agent. So they can, a buyer can walk into any real estate office and say, I wanna buy a home around here. Okay, no problem, here's an agent. Sit in the office, tell me what you're looking for. Let's get you pre-qualified. The, the agent is gonna start, tell me what you're looking for. Great, here's your criteria. Thousands of homes in the MLS, the agent narrows it down, finds the home, schedule appointments, take them out, show them property negotiate the contract, handle everything. It doesn't cost them anything. So when you yeah. think about it, what's going to motivate a buyer to pass up all the free services of a licensed professional real estate agent and go directly to a physical bargain hunters? So I'm just giving you a, a short. So in the end, we know it's a basic law of economics, supply and demand. The more demand that we can create, create for any product or service we're selling, whether it's a house, a car, a pair of shoes, more demand equals more money. That's what happens in an auction. You go in an auction, they're auctioning off, okay, this, uh, how much, what's the starting bid? $100, there's only one bidder, they pay 100, they go. There's more bidders, price goes up. More demand equals more money. An auction is a perfect example of that. And an agent, not just because of the MLS, there's so many things that as an agent we do, especially if you're a prospector, if you're looking for buyers and sellers every day, you're an active agent. You're not gonna sit around and wait for it to happen. You're out there talking to 30, 40 people a day looking for buyers and sellers. So here's the bottom line, they have problems. They don't know they have them. These problems cost them money. And we can solve those problems for them. That's it. That's how we net them more money, by solving the problems that cost them money. The challenge with the FISBO, though, is when you call them, they don't think they got any problems. They think they have it all figured out. Oh, no, I'm getting a lot of calls. And people are coming. And somebody said they're going to give me an offer. And, oh, I got an attorney that's going to handle everything. They think they got it all figured out. So they yeah. got you know, it's, uh, it's that blind spot when you don't know what you don't know. And it's our job. But, but Jackie, I, I can just hire the limited service people and they're going to give me all the exposure that I need and the MLS and it's going to be on all the websites. So what are, what are you possibly going to do to get me more exposure than the limited service that I can pay? Okay. So this is over the phone, Tara? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So over the phone, I'd say, Tara, I hear what you're saying. And obviously, yes, there are a lot of companies out there that you just paid four or $500. They put it in the multiple listing service and you're looking at it thinking, well, that sounds really tempting. I mean, why am I gonna pay your commission when I could 
obviously, you know, in that situation, you would still pay the buyer's agent portion of the commission, right? I mean, they, did they explain that to you? Yeah, but I'm, all, but I'm only paying 3%. I don't have to right. pay the other three. Exactly. So you're thinking, well, you know, at the very least, I could have it in the MLS and it's gonna, I'm going to get a lot of exposure and I would be able to save the other 3% that it would cost to hire an agent to represent minus the flat fee, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And there's no and inventory. Again, and again, Tara, I know you're a smart lady because obviously, you know, I, I can tell just by speaking with you for a couple of minutes. And I agree with you, that's very tempting. Now, let me ask you this, Tara. If I can show you a way where I can more than make up for that difference in commission you're looking to save, and you would see how hiring a, a full-time professional agent to sell this property for you would actually end up getting you more money instead of costing you money. Is that something that you'd be opening to look at it before you make a final decision on who to hire? I mean, yeah, I'm open to looking at it, but you know, how are you really going to net me more money? Yeah, you know what, that's a great question. And I know, Tara, for you, that's the only question that matters. Because bottom line is, you wanna sell this home and you wanna walk away with the most money possible, right? Well, yeah. Absolutely. So why don't we do this, Tara? Let's set up a, a video conference for just 20 minutes. I'll send you the instructions via email, it's really simple. And in those 20 minutes, I'll share with you exactly what I do that has helped dozens of for sale by owners actually net the most money possible, which I know it's what you're looking to do. So it's only 20 minutes, you're under no obligation. Let me share with you what I do and then you can compare and decide what's best for yourself. Would three o'clock work for you today? Would four be better? Well, I mean, do you have a buyer though? Can you just send your, over your buyer to look at my house? That's a great question, Tara. I, and I obviously, as a full-time real estate agent, I work with a lot of buyers at any given time. And I can't say that I have a buyer for your home right now. And, and here's the exciting part about this. I know exactly what to do to find the right buyer for your home and negotiate the highest price in the least amount of time with the least amount of hassle. So Tara, let's meet for 20 minutes. I'll share with you the details of what I do. And then, like I said, at the end of our meeting, you decide what's best for yourself. So would three o'clock work today? Would four be better for you? Four o'clock is better. Okay, can, we, can we go to the virtual for how you would share? What are you sharing with them? Because I know I'm about to get this question before I even look in the chat box. <laughs> yeah, that, that's going to that's gonna take a probably a part good three, hour part three. to go through. Well, not, not because the presentation takes so long. It's just that with a for sale by owner, when, so now we meet, right? We're on Zoom, me and, and the seller. The first thing I'm going to do is, I, it, in bold, Diana used to call it a problem, pre Diana, the original bold author, right? Because they remove all that from bold. The problem presentation, which is, as I said, they have problems. They don't know they have them. So there's a, there's a way to actually say, you know, explain to them all of the problems, break it all down, the lack of exposure, the examples. The, the auction is one example. That's a script. So I'm going to share with the FISBO the, the problems. You've got to be really careful here because I know a big mistake that agents make, and I actually used to hear that from the FISBOs that I used to talk to and list. I don't, agents sometimes get frustrated because the FISBO is pushing back and they, they kind of, they start saying things like, well, you know, this is not going to work for you in, in, in different ways, or um, they make them wrong. That's the point. And you can absolutely not do that. You've got to empathize, understand their, their, the mind of the FISBO. They don't know what they, they don't know. They're not a real estate agent. They're not doing this every day. They're just looking at it 
from their perspective. And the truth is that compared to most real estate agents, they're doing some of the same things agents do. So I, yeah. so then how do we know to stay pushy versus aggressive? Like, right. And that's, I you know, I, I actually made this up myself years ago because I, I remember going on a, I set an appointment with an expired. This is maybe my first, second year, you know, probably first year. I set an appointment with an expired. Oh my gosh, I was so excited. It was a brand new expired. This person is motivated. I'm like, yeah. And it was like for the next day. And the morning, the next morning, I got a call from a real estate agent. I remember who they are. They're still selling real estate in Broward. You probably know who they are. <laughs> I got a call from an agent saying, oh, uh, you, had a, you have an appointment with uh, John Smith tonight. And it, they asked me to give you a call. You know the script. I can call and cancel the appointment for you. Um, I met with them last night and they decided to list with me so you don't need to go. And I'm like, what? And I remember having a coach that said to me, if, you, if this ever happens, if you don't take a listing, call the seller and ask them, what is it that made Why not? It what could I have done better? Yeah, so I could learn. So I remember I called that expired. And I said, oh, I got a call from so-and-so. And of course, you know, I won't be coming out today. I'm just curious, what is it about that agent that made you decide to list with them? And I remember like if it was today, they said, well, you know, they were really aggressive. I'm like, I had no idea what that meant. I'm like, what does that mean? They, they beat you up? You like that? I'm like, what? <laughs> I honestly didn't know what it meant. And then I'm thinking really aggressive, like, okay, how, how, how are you aggressive on a listing appointment? I don't know. And then over time, I actually was able to dif differentiate pushy and aggressive. No one wants to be pushy and pushy is, so what I figured is pushy is when you're self-centered. You know, you're like desperate for a listing and, and it's all about you and, you know, like uh, it's, it's ego driven, like self-centered, desperate, needy. That comes across very pushy and people can tell it's repelling. People are like, oh, I don't, I don't like it. Aggressive is believing that hiring you is the best decision they can make believing, and this is mindset, right? We got to work on sometimes. Believing that you are the best agent in your marketplace. And if they don't hire you, they're making a mistake. I and, love that. And I'm going to be aggressive because I'm not going to take no for an answer when I ask it's still possible, because if I do, it's going to hurt them they are making a mistake. It's going to cost them time, money. They will end up in the hands of the average agent out there that's selling four or five homes a year, have no idea what they're doing. And I'm doing them a disservice by just saying, oh, you want to think it over? Oh, okay. You know, I'll call you tomorrow. <laughs> so what I'm hearing so, you say is that you believe in your soul, in your heart, and that's where it all starts of is the affirmations. 100%. And believing what you're telling them because the one thing that I keep hearing you say consistently is you truly truly know deep in your heart and deep in your soul that you you have a job not only to help them you know that you can help them and that's why you're able to have su such success in it and working with business and expires because you truly believe down to your core again comes back to motivate or affirmations yeah. and positive mindset and what are you filling your head with and, and because you believe it, you're, you're not able to come across salesy or uh, uh, pushy and needy and desperate, even though you were desperate and needy and you needed to pay yes. your bills and you were broke, you, you believed it. And I like the idea of keeping the, the past clients as well, like the last successes you had there as your reminder as well. I think that that's, that's pretty awesome. I really like that. <laughs> I also want to propose that we do a part three of just a, like a presentation um, like virtually, it, it, like if we were to be in the new market that we're in now, because a lot of things are virtual, 
um, it, it, exactly what that conversation would be. And we go over those objections because we don't have a lot of time. But I want to go to some of these questions that we have. And one of them so is- let me, um, let me just say this yep. for now, Tara. The virtual presentation, I would say exactly the same thing as if I was sitting at their kitchen table. So we can do it, but it's not like it would, it wouldn't be it's the same thing. Different. It wouldn't be any different. Absolutely. Well, obviously the only, only thing that might be added is taking away their safety and health concerns. You got to have a way to do that, obviously, because people are concerned about their health and safety and people walking in the house outside of that. So the physical presentation itself will be the same. So yes, you got questions. I love that. And I have to say that that is true because we just had our two best months and I haven't even left the house to not only go on an actual presentation, nor have I actually showed any property in person. So, and we just love that. That, that, we, like, that we had all year. I mean, I man, you're right. The presentation's not any different. The, the buyer consultation is exactly the same. The listing appointment is just different because I have to teach them, especially if they're not tech savvy, how to walk through a home. But it's right. the same thing. It's really the same exactly. thing. Yeah. Um, so we have a few questions about where are you getting um, your uh, best numbers for? And if we can talk about Espresso Agent for what they offer, because I know that, that, um, that you didn't have that service before. And that's been a huge help. Oh, and if I was selling real estate today, there is no question in my mind, Espresso Agent is where I would go. Because not only they give you high quality phone numbers, cell phone numbers, work numbers, emails. You got the CRM. You have everything. It's just an amazing service. I did it the hard way because this didn't exist. So. And then Lewis asked us, you know, we talked, actually, we did cover that. The flat fees for the companies that offer the yard sign, the pictures, the 3%, and make it more desirable. What do you offer to bid that? Uh, Lewis, I'm going to encourage you to go back and listen because we, we, we covered that. And then that comes down to getting that virtual present, present or appointment or the 20 minute in person, whatever they feel comfortable with, right. which is basically the same thing. Do you have a physical nurturing campaign? You know, so my, first, you my first year, and let me see something here. Oh, yeah. I was just looking. Um, needs glasses to read. The, uh, my first year, and I talked to Tristan about that on the first webinar that we did. I didn't understand how I netted more money, all the stuff, the problems. I knew none of that. So my I was nurturing them because that's all I knew how to do. And, and my you use the expendable the expandable folder for the ones and twos. Right, and twos. right. Okay. So I, I would actually call. They were, you know, relatively nice. So yeah, you could come look at the property, do a CMA, whatever. I would go out and then I would call them at least twice a week. That's it. I mean, but I'm not calling, asking to list the property because I didn't even know what I was doing. Just call, hey, so how's the open house? How's it going? What's going on? until they got tired of what they were doing. Because there are two ways to list a FISBO. You can wait until they realize that what they're doing is not working and they're ready to list with you. Or you can make them ready by the dialogue and stuff that you and I role played. It's like the financial benefit. But since I didn't know the financial benefit back then, I was just calling. It wasn't like I wasn't mailing anything. I was just talking to them. I would call twice a week, speak with them after I met with them. You know, I, uh, and FISBOs are not hard to get an appointment with. I mean, having a qualified appointment where they would actually consider listing, that's not so easy. You know, that takes the dialogue we were having. But to just say, oh, I want to look at, don't, don't ever say, would you pay a commission if I have a buyer? I never used that script, not even my first year, because now, first of you're all- You're asking if you're gonna get paid. I, first of all, I don't feel like I'm being truthful because I wasn't looking to sell their house. I was looking to list it. I wasn't looking to just bring in a buyer without having the listing. So to me, I'm not being honest, but also I don't want them to start thinking that I'm gonna bring in a buyer without them hiring me. So I never had a conversation. It was always like, I'm back then, I can prepare market analysis for your home. 
and I just want to come by and take a look at it and da da da. And they were like, sure, and you know, so whatever. So I would I'll go see the house, meet them, and then follow up, follow up, call and call, keep calling and calling until I, I don't know if I said this to Tristan on the first webinar. The first for sale by owner that I listed, I remember the house. Yeah, you did. You said yeah. you remembered everything I remember about it. Because the guy was like three months after, you know, I met and calling every week, every week, every week. And the guy's like, okay, yeah, this is not working. We want to list with you. Okay, great. I go and list it. And it was really like that, that nurturing. And I know that there are a lot of options of how to nurture people. You know, there's social media that we can contact, message, text messages, we could send emails, we can mail stuff, we could do all of that. And I've, I never did any of that. I couldn't mail anything, I was broke. Emails back then, you know, barely people had emails. Like I bought my first computer a, couple, a year after or whatever, when I got into real estate. So I know all of these things work, and I believe firmly that there's no substitute for having a conversation with people. You know, people may, I, I believe this strongly, 100%. People make decisions when they're excited about the future. They make a decision yeah. to set the appointment with me, to list with me, because they, they get excited about what they feel I can do for them. And it's very difficult to get someone excited because it's an emotion with words only. It's how I'm speaking. You know, in communication, they say 93% is how you say it, 7% are the words. One, I believe that completely. So the challenge is social media, emails, text messages, mailing. All you have are words in a phone or a piece of paper or on an email. There's the emotion. Yeah, we got emojis and stuff, but that, there's no co comparison. You know, I know that I pick up the phone and I talk to someone and I know how to speak with them. And I, the words matter. It's not like I say whatever, you know, but so there are certain scripts and dialogues that definitely work better than just, you know, making things up as you go. But how we're saying it is most of the communication and with typed stuff only or social media, we can convey it in a way that gets people to say, come on over. I want to hear what you have to say. Yes, let's meet. Yes, let's go. So that's great. And uh, I love that the people I've, I've gotten so many uh, comments about others that they, what, two people said this is the best one they've had all year. And they could, the other person just said that they could listen to you all day. So oh. we're totally doing a part three. Just I, I, I want to talk to my, I want that person to tell my kids. So oh, I can listen to you all day. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can learn. So the two things that you just talked about is you you're solving a problem for them and that's why they're so excited to hire you and they're excited to get started with you they're excited yeah. for you to come over because you've solved a you're solving a problem you're letting them know that you can solve it and i agree with you um that it's our tonality and i think that that's why things um get so misconstrued and lost in communication when we send text messages and emails i can't stand anything more than negotiating via email so i always do it over the phone and i send a follow-up email in writing so i have it in writing but it when i i have never been goodness because i was raised great right, from mama mama dukes and great coaches like yourself uh that you, I never negotiate any offers via email or text message, not even over the phone. However, now things have changed a little bit. So now it's just become over Zoom. I wanna see you. I wanna see their body language. I wanna read their responses. I wanna hear and feel their tonality. I wanna see it. And then you can do so much more about, you know, body language speaks so much. You can tell what they're feeling without them even saying anything. And that's why I feel like it's so important to do things in person and really believe that you can solve problems for them and you can, and you can really help them. Yeah. And somebody just said, um, is, uh, are you, are you finding with your coaching clients that people are more hesitant to meet with the, with COVID-19? 
they're more uh, say it again. hesitant, more like hesitant to meet. I think it just depends on the, I actually, of the person that they are. I actually feel that it's easier. It's easier because they don't, you know, I don't, they don't have to let somebody in their house. It's just, and here's the thing too. When you ask for the video conference appointment, right? Make it, this is critical. Make it easy for them to say yes. Just 20 minutes. Because if they think it's going to be an hour, two hours, whatever, it's like, oh my gosh, no. When you make it easy for them to say yes, when the way that you ask for the appointment, like when I role played with you, there, there's something in it for them that they're intrigued about, that they're curious about, that they want to hear more about. So they're like, well, just 20 minutes and you're going to tell me how, okay, fine. You know, this is, it's like, they're, they have nothing to lose. So again, it's what you're saying and how you're saying it that's going to get you more appointments virtual or whatever or not you know because if if they don't see any reason to give you 20 minutes they won't whether it's on zoom or whether it's in person it makes no difference so the when i said to you you know i going back i don't know what i said but it was something like if if I can show you a way, Tara. You know, it's a hypothetical question. It's easy to say yes. They're intrigued. Well, maybe, maybe she knows something. I don't know. Okay, But fine. you also use a downswing with that, you know? Oh, like, you're using, like, I, 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 hear, I hear it. How, yeah, that's how you, again, it's how you say it. Because when you use an upswing, it makes them think, like, oh, no, this is weird. So I'm speaking with authority and confidence at the same time. I sound very approachable, but I'm being aggressive. You know, it's a combination of skills. Believe me, 24 years ago when I started doing this, I was clueless, you know? So it's like people, oh my gosh, how does it? It's like tens of thousands of prospecting calls, coaching calls, training. It's like never ending and you practice and you, it doesn't take 24 years, by the way. Within, <laughs> if you really dedicate yourself to becoming the best and you put in the time and you train and you practice and you make calls, you take massive action, within six months, a year, you're like blown away. Like, whoa, major difference. The challenge I think some agents might have is not seeing results. They're just all over the place. You know, they're not committed, dedicated, determined, and, and maybe they're not maybe they're listening to the wrong information, the wrong trainer, the wrong whatever. I don't know. Because there are a lot of shiny objects out there, right? You could choose from so many. Oh, I could go with this one. I could learn from that one. So it, it doesn't take that long. And I think making progress every day so we don't live the definition of insanity, that's Amen. what it's gonna take to really be skilled and be the best of the best i love fizzbos and expireds like i love them i think you can tell i know you do <laughs> but, but see the thing is first of all i changed my life by mastering fizzbos and expires literally my kids lives like just blown away i but told also, you my mom said same thing she saw it firsthand in the 90s yeah the thing also is i when you master fizzbos and expires you're in control of your business because you know you can walk into your office in the morning without any leads pick up the phone call make calls set an appointment pre-qualify go on and list it the same day fizzbos and expires that is possible i don't have to be buying leads i don't have to oh where am i gonna get my next deal no i want a deal i can get one and Again, I used to have many days, even in my best years, where I wouldn't set an appointment every day, but then I had leads. I'd follow up on a lead, set an appointment from that. One day I don't set any appointments. I think the, the most I did was, there was one day, that was my record, I set seven listing appointments in one day. That's awesome. Okay, so that makes up for a week or three or four days that I go without an appointment. Right. So it, it works out in the end when, because even if you don't set an appointment, you're getting great leads and it's like Fizzbos and expires are a gold mine. 
seriously. I love that. And thank you for Espresso Agent to be able to give us those leads yeah. and also be able to give us the CRM and the platform in order to follow up with them. They give us the system and it's a one-stop shop. So there's a special lab coats agent um, code for you guys, uh, just for lab coat agents for espresso that is in the comments and will also be in the link for the um, follow up for this. And we are doing a follow up part three just on scripts because I could literally sit here and go for another hour and we're already over our hour. So uh, Me too. We, I love this stuff. So I don't get bored. I know. I, I would love, if we had time, I would love to keep going. So I would love to do, if we're going to do a follow-up for just scripts, go back to part one, guys, and put in lab code agents, Jackie Kravitz, um, and you'll be able to see part one. Part two will be up as well. And I, I loved, I thought of an affirmation when you were just talking about that, the seven listings and when you were not getting any and what's the one there is, there is, there's a listing on my desk and it's my job to find it. <laughs> there you go. So Absolutely. use espresso agent and espresso agent will help you for that and give you the leads and give you the CRM and we'll have that. And Jackie, thank you so much. It was I an honor to be able to interview Say you. Say hi to your mom for me. I will. I will. All right, and so. uh, we'll flamingo soon. Yay. Sounds good. Thank <laughs> right, you everybody for listening in. Thank you. My pleasure.